Hello, my name is Christian Livingstone and I'm doing a, uh, a little review and a modification and a, a, I'm going to give a little bit of the rationale as to why uh, this welding cabinet cart was a good thing for me and, and why it, it was better uh, uh, not to have went ahead and built my own uh, welding cart like a lot of guys do and uh, honestly I just don't have the uh, sheet metal uh, working equipment to uh, do an actual uh, cabinet uh, so you know with the division of labor uh, being what it is uh, even for someone who welds or an expert welder I'm not an expert but uh, you know even for somebody like that it, it wouldn't make much sense you know this cart or cabinet I bought for uh, $219 before shipping uh, or other costs and uh, you know it just saved a lot of time and uh, it really uh, uh, straightened up uh, the area where I uh, weld it's a very small area and you know the uh, space is is pretty precious here because uh, you know it's it's quite small but uh, this has been quite helpful and uh, I'm going to just share with you uh, uh, why you might want to consider it too. I'm not getting paid or uh, compensated uh, from Northern Tool uh, at all or anybody else. So uh, I'm just sharing my experience here and uh, one of the reasons uh, why I chose this uh, was uh, because uh, I thought it might be reversible and even if it wasn't reversible and what I mean by reversible is that this is uh, considered a side draw cabinet cart and uh, you know I wondered uh, well you know the way they had it uh, uh, shown it drew from the wrong side for me because this is really the only uh, corner I have to uh, uh, place this cart and welder and where I had my old welding uh, cart uh, and my old welder, I got a new new welder, a nice new Everlast 210 EXT, and uh, uh, you know it uh, was a lot bigger than my old uh, welder and, and the small cart. I did adapt it uh, for this welder for a time, but uh, you know it really wasn't quite adequate. So uh, I did. I decided to upgrade to a new uh, welding uh, uh, cabinet rather than a cart, and it had this side draw, which I liked. But the side was uh, uh, not the, the right side. So, you know, I knew I could reverse it, uh, you know, one way or another. But uh, happily, uh, the uh, design and the engineering of this cart uh, was such that uh, it's easy to reverse. They have it so that you can uh, uh, take the plate out from underneath and just reverse it. They line up nice. There was a little notching. I notched it out right here with a... Uh, a little Dremel. I didn't break out the uh, grinder or anything. I just used a, a little Dremel with uh, a cutting wheel on it and uh, I didn't even cut it off right here. I just bent it out to create kind of a flange and retain some of that strength there without cutting it flush out. I might knock off these corners with uh, a grinder just so they don't catch or cut something but uh, down below this is uh, this is the uh, reverse orientation of the drawers. So you just got to notch out that uh, side like, like is the case over here. You can see this is prefabricated notched. And I suppose if they were really uh, spot on, they would have done the same down below, but they didn't. So, you know, I'm sure 90% of the people are not going to want to reverse these, but I did. So that is uh, required to do it and it's a it's an easy thing to do like i said you don't even have to cut off the the sheet metal there and this is pretty uh pretty stout stuff overall this uh, whole package uh weighed over 90 pounds so you know this uh there's a lot of metal here i don't know if it's uh, made in the north american uh, continent but uh you know it's uh, pretty well made it's pretty stout and uh, I'm liking it so far, and like I said, the uh, uh, the design is uh, uh, thoughtful in how you can just reverse this bottom plate. The alignment's good. So here we are at the uh, Northern Tool uh, website, and here's the unit itself, the uh, welding cart. You can see it's uh, 249, and you know there's pictures and other stuff. That's about how it's going to look uh, when you see my welder up top there, and there's video down here and. You can see other stuff. 
And here's that other one I was talking about, the uh, larger one. And it has a, a different shelving configuration. I, it just didn't seem like what I wanted. So I stuck with the uh, lower priced one, a uh, little bit uh, uh, smaller and uh, more fitting for the space I'm, I'm going to be using. So I suspect that there's going to be a lot of people who are in the same position uh, as I was and am right now in doing that, in upgrading to a larger uh, welding card or cabinet. Because, uh, you know, I started small with a small TIG welder and uh, the card I had was very common and typical for those kind of welders and many others. Even MIG welders can be found on this same uh, uh, welding cart that I'll show you. I'll show you what I, I've been coming from, what I'm going to, and how well that uh, serves my purpose. And I'm, I'm guessing it's going to uh, be helpful to a lot of other people because, uh, you know, when you're in, in doing welding, whether, uh, you know, on the job or more for the, uh, the home welder, the hobbyist, uh, you know, you'll have uh, a welder in the cart somewhere and uh, then you'll maybe want to get a better machine like I did. The uh, TIG welder I had was a DC only uh, TIG welder and actually it was a plasma cutter as well. It was a combo unit. I still have it and it's a brilliant unit. Nice cheap Chinese thing that uh, really has been great. But uh, I uh, wanted to uh, uh, get into uh, welding some aluminum and uh, that takes a, an AC DC TIG welder. They're more costly, and uh, but you know not too, too terribly high. So anyway, I did. I, I bought a, a new TIG welder about six months ago, and I adapted the existing card to uh, you know make the the welder go on to it, and you know it it, it works. But uh, you know it's the card is really undersized, as you'll see. And so building space. It's uh, my laundry closet. It's a pantry area, and uh, you know, it's it's not large. And, uh, you know, here's the welder. This is the new welder, but it's on the old cart. And as you can see, it, it protrudes quite a bit uh, of the way out beyond it. And, you know, I modified it a little bit just so it would accept this cart. And, uh, you know, it's working. It's, it's doable for the moment. It's been sitting there for about six months. But uh, you can see it's pretty cluttered down below. And, that's what I'm hoping is that uh, some of these uh, small uh, power hand tools will go inside the uh, drawers and all of this other stuff will be contained better and, and just be less cluttered and, and tacky. And uh, then that uh, second bottle of Argon, uh, along with the uh, first that's under there, uh, they'll be consolidated together and I'll, I'll probably turn that... Uh, uh, washer dryer unit in that direction and get a little space that way. When I got the new welder, I, I just uh, made the uh, compact uh, welding table. But the list price on this is $249. I got it for $219 on sale and uh, there was some shipping. So, you know, they sell them on uh, Amazon as well as the uh, uh, Northern Tool uh, website. So, you know, check both places. Maybe you can you know, avoid sales tax on one or the other of them. And that's what I always recommend whenever possible. Avoid, you know, paying the extortion. I modified this uh, a, a little bit. Uh, I'll just point out one thing. My uh, Argon tank or bottle, this was designed uh, to only uh, uh, hold one bottle off the back end here and uh, these, uh, you know, I don't knock the uh, manufacturer for having such a, a cheap, flimsy uh, way to uh, fix the bottle uh, on the unit because, you know, they're undoubtedly uh, conforming to a standard of OSHA and or, uh, Washington, D.C. And those standards are very low and, and quite poor and it calls for a chain usually and, you know, I don't have to use this because, uh, you know, I haven't contracted into the OSHA and the federal government, U.S. federal government. Uh, but, you know, people and businesses that uh, do have an employee uh, ID number, an EIN, 
do end up having to, you know, follow these kind of rules, and uh, uh, the standards are not that good. These these kind of things can slip out easily, and uh, you see that, you know, since it's up out away from the wall, you know, it, it, the, the bottle won't sit flush up here. It'll, it'll rest on these two points and down at the bottom, and that's it. So it, it loses, you know, the ability to have some surface tension up, up against here. So this is one of the first things I did. I tossed this, so to speak, and uh, I made sure this unit was large enough to contain not one bottle that I use, but two. And I, I use rather large bottles. I use a 150 cubic inch, uh, or cubic, uh, 150 cubic foot uh, bottles of argon. And they're about almost seven uh, inches in diameter. So I made sure that uh, before I ordered it, that I could uh, get two, two of those bottles. And you know, uh, the diameters are not always exactly the same, so I had a little little more room than I thought. And so uh, I haven't uh, actually uh, put it to the test yet and put both of my argon bottles. I've just finished doing the modification, and uh, uh, but it will. It will hold two bottles, undoubtedly. And previously I used uh, 125 cubic inch uh, bottles, and you know, they're a little lighter. And, uh, you see them a lot, but uh, you know, more is better, I, I guess, when it comes to gas. So I've just been using 150 cubic feet bottles. But uh, if I ever have to step down, this, what I've devised here, will accept those smaller bottles too. And let me just start to show you. I'll bring the camera around and show you what I've done. Okay, so here's what I've got. Uh, uh, in place to uh, hold my bottles uh, securely and uh, uh, happily I happen to have some uh, nice uh, heavy uh, stainless steel uh, strap or bar stock and I, you can see I just made a, a real simple design here uh, and use the existing holes that uh, were uh, you know originally for that handle up front these have the, the captivated uh, nuts behind there, which is a, a nice thing. You don't have to use two uh, wrenches or anything. And so I just uh, uh, use the existing hardware, even though this is an Allen head, I just used it. And uh, uh, this, this will be quite nice, I'm sure. I was going to uh, take some of this existing uh, bar strap and, and uh, you know, weld it onto some all thread here and make it kind of a wing nut. But uh, I decided these things were cheap enough. They were ready-made and a little more ergonomic to, to have a, a star handle like this. And, you know, it looks a little less homemade. So, uh, you know, it was really easier for me to just use one of these, a couple of these, actually. And then I also took uh, some one-inch pad eyes and uh, put a secondary... Uh, a strap down here uh, with that uh, ratchet mechanism. So it's a, a endless loop ratcheting uh, strap that you'll see a lot of welders use that as a, a way to secure a bottle to something a lot better than those flimsy uh, uh, chains. And uh, oh, what else? Uh, I did uh, happen to uh, put some uh, magnets in the corner here. I took uh, took some very common. Some very common uh, cabinet uh, mechanisms and just plucked the uh, magnets out of there because it wasn't really, wasn't really a lot to grab onto and screw into so it made better sense to me to just uh, use some real good uh, uh, emblem adhesive and just uh, uh, glue some uh, magnets and you can see it holds nicely. And all of these uh, cabinets or drawers uh, have this uh, locking mechanism. I'm not going to really rely on that. And, uh, you know, it, it probably is uh, better if you do get some magnets because you either have to, uh, down on these two doors, you have to, you know, actually use the key and lock it every time, or it, it could just wander loose and, and get, uh, I don't know, a little bit of vibration in there. I just didn't like it. I like the magnets. Don't like the uh, the keys. But it's nice that the uh, uh, ability to lock those doors is there in case I want to 
you know, move this uh, uh, on a trailer or something, that's when I'll actually lock them. But for general purposes, no. And uh, there was a little problem with this top drawer uh, initially. It, it kind of hung up uh, uh, when it uh, got closed, but, uh, you know, I loosened up the tracks and kind of uh, adjusted and tapped down the flange a little bit with a hammer and got it to where it goes quite nicely. So now the fit and finish and you know, the feel of it uh, is, is fairly precision. It's, it's quite nice. And there's a little rubber bumper behind uh, the track that kind of kind of makes it a little better. And instead of uh, putting these uh, hose hangers on the back side or the behind side, I put them on the front here because I don't want to have stuff hanging in the back and maybe hanging up on things as as it moves around. And instead, what I did was uh, installed uh, that little uh, uh, angle iron or uh, channel iron down below there in such a way that it will hold these uh, uh, filler rod uh, from weld coat. Uh, you know, I'm guessing that the more uh, aluminum that I do, the the more of these, and, and there's I have more more than this, but. Uh, you know, they're going to start to accumulate because there's different alloys of aluminum and different sizes. I'm tending only to use uh, right now uh, 16th and uh, 3 seconds, just like the tungsten. So, you know, this is where I'm going to start to keep those uh, tubes uh, just so it'll be tidy. And Oh, what else? These uh, pad eyes. I was liking the pad eyes so well down, down below there for that... Uh, ratcheting strap that uh, uh, you know it occurred to me to put some up top here because you know the welder will be uh, sitting up top and uh, this doesn't have a flange or a lip uh, right here so you know somebody could pull a, a, the torch lead or a ground lead and jerk that uh, welder right off the, the top of these babies so I'm gonna secure secure the welder down uh, with these babies so someone might ask well you know you weld, uh, why don't you just make a car? You know, welders do that. Oh, it's always so cool and fun to see, you know, how they do it and how it turns out. And, you know, as you saw, I did, uh, you know, make the compact welding table, but that was because there was nothing else available that would really suit my purpose. And, uh, you know, I could make a welding car, but I doubt I could come up with anything like this. This is, you know made by uh, sheet metal fabrication. I don't have the tools that, that could do anything like this. But, you know, I could make a welding cart like a lot of guys do, but this really uh, suited my purpose uh, especially well. And with the division of labor, it, it's really ridiculous uh, for the most part for, you know, even a welder to try to, you know, produce uh, something like a welding cart when you can buy it off the shelf for you know a hundred or two hundred bucks and you know that's about what i paid for that first cheap cart there almost a hundred bucks after shipping but maybe it was a little less maybe 79 dollars and uh this is only 219 plus some shipping so you know and when i say the division of labor it what i mean is it doesn't make sense even for me to try to reproduce that much in the same way that uh, you know it would be stupid for a brain surgeon to change his own oil you know unless he really liked doing it it's, he, he can use his time better make more money you know doing the brain surgeries and let other people do you know the less lucrative things and so even for a welder some things, uh, it doesn't make sense to uh, try to reproduce it because, you know, a custom welding card is, it's a one-off, it's a prototype. And with prototypes, you know, the first one is always more costly, more time consuming. It takes, you know, more materials because some things don't work out. Some designs have to be changed. And, you know, the second one comes quick, but the first one is, is uh, a electric hand cycle over there. This uh, dual rear wheel drive electric hand cycle, you know, came right out of, right out of that little space there. And, uh, you know, 
it, it took a while for me to uh, go through some changes to get that just the way I wanted. And new for this year, for the last year, or so I put a, a second hub motor on the other rear wheel. So this baby rolls through ice, snow, mud, no problem. Before, not so much with uh, one uh, hub motor, and you can put those on any bicycle. Uh, you know, it, it did great, generally speaking, but I wanted to see if I could uh, make this baby go uh, uh, in the snow, especially, and it does. It goes great and in the mud, too. You can see I've been in the mud uh, pretty well this, this season, and there's my Christian uh, Kingdom plate. Uh, I'm a Christian anarchist, so I'm a, a stateless person. I'm not enrolled in the state uh, or the federal state, so that's what that's about. And there's a little biblical verse there. That's the uh, Great Commission. All authority is given unto me in heaven and on earth. And we don't have to wait another 2,000 years for that to be so. So anyway, yeah. Uh, next thing we'll see is this uh, new welding cabinet uh, taking the place of the old one. So. You know, out with the old, in with the new, and uh, undoubtedly it's uh, going to do quite well. We're going to see what the end result is. And let me just uh, pause here for a moment so you can take it all in with a, a wider angle view. There it all is. And uh, you can see I raised that middle cabinet to kind of scooch it all in there under there. And... Uh, Look at all that floor space. I peeled up the uh, linoleum as well. It was pretty dinged up, uh, but uh, man, it just seems like I've got a lot more floor space, less clutter, and uh, you know, this welding uh, cabinet cart has done that, and it's, uh, you know, done what I wanted it to do, and uh, as you can see, uh, it has a, a real nice look, too. So it's very possible that uh, I'm going to have to relinquish the uh, title to having the world's smallest metalworking shop. I, I believe that somewhere uh, somebody has got one smaller than this, and uh, you know it's probably like uh, this was before. So anyway, let's get a closer look here. And uh, as you can see or hear, uh, the uh, welder is running, and this uh, Everlast 210 EXT is. A very quiet TIG welder and you know I might have mentioned it before how I like that uh, uh, better than those uh, on-demand fans this runs all the time it runs a whisper quiet and it doesn't you know kind of intrude on you with the fan going on and off and wh why I bring that up is because I mentioned that this uh, cabinet may not be uh, a good fit for somebody with a uh, water cooler uh, for their uh, torch, their TIG torch, but you know I probably won't use a, uh, a water cooled uh, torch, but you know what, after uh, you know working with this, if I ever do get a uh, water cooler for my uh, TIG welder, you know I would go ahead and put it down below and I'd probably cut out some holes and frame in some expanded metal uh, windows on this side, maybe the uh, front here and on the back side, and give it, uh, you know, a lot of venting so that I could uh, uh, have the uh, water cooler down there, because I believe a water cooler is louder, its fan would be louder than my welder, and I, I just don't like the idea of, you know, having a nice quiet welder, but then having a noisy, uh, loud uh, water cooler, so in that way, if I ever did have one and installed it down below and, and you know, maybe bought some stainless steel uh, louver vents that you can just placard right on there and they look real cool. But, you know, you could also build some expanded metal ones and frame them in there real nice. I would think that uh, it would muffle uh, any extra sound from another uh, fan down below there enough that... Uh, you know, it would probably uh, approach the quietness of, of this uh, welder. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, that was the uh, FedEx gal. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I uh, wouldn't have any problem uh, uh, putting a, a, a water cooler for the TIG torch uh, down below there, just venting it on about three sides. And, uh, uh, you know, because these uh, 
Everlast welders do have uh, an outlet. You can plug a water cooler right into the back of the welder, and so when you turn the welder on, the water cooler comes on as well. And a kind of a, a, a nice uh, thing about the uh, unit itself, this uh, welding uh, cabinet cart, is these drawers draw open, but there's about a, a two-inch channel behind the drawers, and you can easily put the uh, water cooler lines and drill a big old hole here and put a rubber grommet out there, so you can have the water lines coming right to your uh, uh, water-cooled TIG torch here. And the same with in the back, you could put the uh, water cooler's uh, power line on the other corner, so it would plug right into that outlet in the back for the uh, automatic, uh, you know, powering uh, of the uh, water cooler. So, yeah, I initially thought, oh, well, you know, uh, a welding cabinet like this might exclude the uh, potential to have a water cooler uh, uh, in there, but I don't think so now. I would, uh, I would be happy to punch out uh, some holes on uh, those two doors, the front side and the back side, and uh, vent it uh, very nicely, and uh, that would even uh, uh, undoubtedly muffle the sound if the uh, water cooler did tend to be uh, louder than this nice quiet welder itself. Otherwise, let me make a few points uh, in my uh, observation uh, along this process with these slight modifications I've made uh, about the cart itself because it is a, a review of the cart. And, uh, you know, I, I noticed that uh, on all four sides of the uh, vertical uh, sheet metal, there is no seams apparent. But apparently the way they did that is they uh, folded all three sides with some flanges on the corner uh, on each of the front face corners. And then these cross members, they just dropped in. They uh, welded them across that uh, seam there, but then they ground them down. So all the way around on these four vertical sides, it's seemingly seamless. And that's a that's a nice uh, touch. It's a it's a kind of a quality nice touch. You know they didn't use a, a spot welder anywhere on this, and uh, even this top here they didn't spot weld that down. This uh, top is actually removable very easily. You just unscrew the uh, several uh, screws uh, and the top removes. And uh, you know for a welder or somebody who wants to maybe customize the top, that's nice. You know if you don't like this. Uh, you know, drop off here, you could switch this around so you have that little flange to kind of hold stuff from falling off. Or you could uh, just, you know, replace the top altogether. And uh, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but, you know, maybe you want to uh, remove it and put some little tabs uh, so you can just screw into the welder itself to hold it in place. You see, I got these straps we talked about with these uh, little pad eyes and I, I do like these pad eyes and these straps because uh, they can be removed and it's not a major modification just uh, I used one of the existing holes for that screw down for the top itself so you know one two three four more holes and these uh, four pad eyes are, are in and done and speaking of pad eyes let me get back uh, to this uh, this was really the only modification to speak of. You know, we reversed the, the draw side. It now draws from, from the side I want it. And as you can see for this space, that's the smart way to go. But uh, these uh, uh, retainers for your argon bottles. I suppose the, the elegant solution or the expedient, uh, efficient, easiest solution would be just to put a couple of these uh, pad eyes uh, top and bottom and uh, use the ratcheting strap and that's that but I did I went ahead and used some uh, stainless uh, uh, strap or bar that I had because I, I did want something stationary you know uh, sticking out here uh, these arms coming out uh, you know so when I'm jostling around with the bottles they they got something to run up against uh, if need be but it's really not necessary. You could put a couple of these uh, top and bottom and it'd be, you know, a lot more efficient to uh, just get you going. But I do. I, I like this uh, mechanism and it uh, works well. Uh, I believe you could uh, 
even tighten this down if you've got the uh, 125 uh, cubic square foot bottles it'd be fine and as you can see the two uh, uh, 150 cubic foot uh, uh, bottles you know <laughs> there's not much room to play but uh, there is a little but not much and if you go down below it's about the same so you know you can get uh, a couple of 150 cubic foot uh, bottles on there but uh, maybe 125 would be ideal but either way you can do them both and uh, you know you can you can also center one bottle in there if I don't want two bottles for some reason on there at, at some point I can just set the one in there and maybe use this uh, this uh, cinching strap to lasso around it and hold it in the center and uh, oh I suppose uh, that pretty much covers the points and uh, Maybe I'll just uh, uh, summarize by saying that, uh, you know, this uh, Northern Tool welding cabinet is, uh, it's well built and, and it's well designed too. You know, they uh, undoubtedly engineered the uh, uh, potential for reversing it pretty easily with only the very slightest modification. So it's uh, well built, well designed and it's well priced so uh, I do I recommend it and uh, uh, I think it'll save you a lot of time rather than building your own and going through all that and you know unless you have a lot of real sophisticated sheet metal uh, uh, brakes and stuff like that you know you're probably not gonna be able to to replicate this kind of stuff for the for the time and price involved that you can just buy one like this and they're, they're quite good you can see there there was a, a divider in here that I removed uh, it's just for for me it's no good and here's the other one and blah 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 so I believe that uh, I'm a I'm gonna in a manner of speaking be in tall tube welding cotton now Okay, so let me get back to that tall tick welding cotton, so to speak. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think the cart's great. I recommend it, and uh, I think the price is good too. So, you know, if you see this uh, on YouTube, uh, you know, feel free to give me some uh, feedback and uh, tell me if you bought one and, you know, if you think it was good for you what might be better, I don't know.